So when I when I started, I haven't even, even been on board for a full year. I started uh, end of February last year, but I thought it was urban legend and, until I sat down with Lance a few times up in Aspen. And he went out for a bike ride. I think he went from Aspen to Glenwood Springs, called, then got back and said, you know, why does Colorado not have a big time uh, stage race like California and, and other great places in the world? So we did what, you know, the greatest athlete in the world would do. He picks up, phone calls in the governor's office. I can only imagine who took that call. You know, this is Lance Armstrong calling for Governor Ritter. And uh, they got together, formed what is known as the Gang, Gang of Five, and uh, the race came to be. And thanks to uh, John, our, our current governor, I think uh, he's been our best probably cheerleader and champion worldwide. We have phenomenal uh, support. Everyone in this room, and, and we've, we've seen it on the national level as well. Uh, fortunately, the Gang of Five took the race to the shadows been very successful in the restaurant business, a uh, great piece yesterday in the Denver Post on Smash, and they said, would you like to be the title sponsor? And they said, well, we'd actually like to own the race because we want to make sure that it's going to be here for a long time, and, and so that's how it came to be. And for an event like this to be successful for all of us, it's got to have a deep financial commitment, which these guys have made. There's got to be a lot of patience and a lot of vision, and you take one of those away, and uh, it gets a little wobbly, so we're, I'm very grateful to the Shads for what they've been able to what they've enabled us to do, and, and uh, I think our best days are still ahead. I won't go, I'm not going to read uh, the stats, but it, it's amazing what's going on in this sport. I think we all know in this room, I think there's more people that ride their bikes than ski golf and play tennis combined. But the demos are uh, phenomenal. There's 40 million people that are actively participating in the sport here in America. The average of it, household income of 75. It's about a 60 40 split between man and female, but it is a sport on fire. We had over a million spectators. We did a lot of research. We hired a firm out of um, St. Louis, and we did a lot of sampling throughout uh, the seven days of the race. And if you look at that number, the average household income of, of people attending the race was almost 115,000, which is just it's, it's great for tourism, and we, we found that 23% of that little over a million people came from outside of Colorado. That's going to be, that number is just, pardon me, that number is just going to grow uh, exponentially now that people know what we are, they know how to get here, and, and uh, it's amazing when I meet people on airplanes because I always wear the, the race sweat, and people will come up and they say, did you, you know, did you go to that race? I said, as a matter of fact, I did all seven days. I said, well, we booked our va vacation. I met a, a couple from D.C. on a plane about a month ago. They've already taken their vacation, uh, or booked their vacation for Colorado this August. Uh, besides Governor Hickenlooper, uh, our best ambassadors have been the athletes themselves, and as, as we're going to see here in a second, we did have, you know, the best field to ever compete on U.S. soil. This is a quote from from T.J., one of the up and comers. Uh, I think we're going to see on the podium in France in, in the years ahead. And these guys, what's interesting, not just the Americans, but they love coming to this country. In particular, they like coming to Colorado. And, and the way they're treated here, I mean, the hotels and the good food and, and, and the smiling faces, they want to come back. They don't, they don't get this anywhere else in the world. They get it in California, but I think Sean and, and, and Steve from USA Cycling would tell you, they, they, these guys, um, they're not treated like the rock stars they are here in Colorado. Um, we've got a great uh, group of host cities. Uh, in fact, my entire staff, just Alexis and I are the only ones in the office, our entire crew's out on the road meeting with city officials from each of these. But as you can see, we start off in uh, opening weekend and there'll be a bunch of activities that weekend uh, besides our kickoff gala. We're going to have a grand fondo. I should probably ask if uh, who from the media is here, because some, some of this hasn't been released. <laughs> <laughs> My PR girl is going to shoot me. <laughs> but uh, Durango, as we all know, is one of the great uh, cycling communities on the planet. And so I think we're going to see opening weekend crowds just blow up. We go from Durango to Telluride, Montrose to Crested Butte. And that's that great finish last year, if you, you saw the horse on the... Uh, on the footage there, that's where the horse kind of followed the, the peloton for probably the last two miles. Um, and then we had the great finish, uh, kind of halfway up Mount Crested Butte, and that's where Levi put down that great performance. And you had all the big names out there. You had Cadell, you had the Swex that were part of the, the breakaway. So that's when it really kind of unfolded and became a race. We then repeat the, the Queen Stage, Gunnison to Aspen. We're going to go up over Independence again, punish these guys. 
And then, and then the next day we're going Aspen to Beaver Creek. And what's interesting about that, we're going to go back up over into Vegas. So in the first uh, 10 minutes of that, of that ride, we're going to take them back, and then we're going to finish high in Beaver Creek. Then Breckenridge to Colorado Springs, Golden to Boulder, and obviously the time trial to, uh, to finish it off. A couple comments on that final weekend. I have a bet with my staff. I actually think the biggest attendance day of the entire week is going to be Golden uh, to Boulder, just because of the heritage. And, and is anyone here from Golden, by the way? Th this committee did an amazing job. In fact, the athletes, not just one or two, but probably a dozen, said that's the biggest start crowd they've seen for any race in the world, including the Tour de France. That's made 75,000. So I think that, I think that uh, finish, uh, and we're getting a lot of, I would call it pressure, but a lot of um, ideas to finish at the top of Flagstaff, and we're considering that would be great uh, for television. So, there's the governor and his Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting, uh, <laughs> with the, we borrowed that from the sun, with, with the million plus spectators, these folks, these fans show up hours early, so what we, what we do in each Finnish city is produce what we call our lifestyle festival. There's a music stage, a beer and wine garden, there's activities for kids and families, there's a uh, sustainability section. And it's really, you know, it's a really uh, a nice place to, to celebrate our, our state and showcase a lot of our, our local businesses. And so what you see here is a shot from the Lifestyle Festival. I mentioned earlier, we had three Olympians, 11 national champions, and for the first time in the history of the United States professional cycling, we were able to secure one, two, and three finishers from the Tour de France just three weeks earlier. And uh, although it's not official, so you can't write it, we have, we are getting good signals from uh, Cadell Evans, last year's Tour de France, that he wants to, um, he wants to come back. And the fact that he's asked us to help his family get a secure Winnebago, I think, is a good sign that we're going to be able to attract those type of athletes. Uh, this is something that, uh, because the race came together rather quickly, we're, we were proud of. Uh, we believe that this race was probably our, our broadcast platform was the uh, most aggressive of any race in the history of, of our sport here in the U.S. We were 25 hours on the NBC Sports Group. We were uh, cable during the week, and then we were network live uh, showcasing um, Colorado to U.S. And on top of that, we were seen in 161 countries and territories around the world, primarily in big networks like Eurosport. We think that number, now that we have a little time on our side, will be just over 200 countries and territories this year. So, it's, as, as John has said many times, it is a true postcard that we are sending Colorado to the world. That, that makes us very proud. Um, we haven't released all the details yet, but you're going to see us increase the television coverage. We're going to go from 25 to 29 hours this year, and the big bonus is we're going to be network on NBC both Saturday and Sunday. So those two days of big crowds, uh, and, I, and I failed to mention a couple slides ago, on the time trial, the reason we've done that is a lot of people are asking why the time trial in Denver. We think that's the greatest chance to see the race determined in the final minutes after 700 miles on, on national TV. And we think that'd be pretty dramatic, not only for the sport, but for Colorado. Uh, wonderful press coverage, and, and, you, and I won't go into to all of them there, but all, all of the big, uh, all the big titles uh, we're here and covered the race, and I think it's going to be even more, more robust this year. We have a lot of the big magazines where we've done, done some long lead story interviews, and so men's health, women's health, you're going to see a lot of um, uh, promotion, a lot of articles on the race in, in advance. Uh, and then I'd, I'd just like to, a big shout out here regionally, all of the, the local community newspapers did a wonderful job, but our, our probably our two best regional partners were Channel 9, KUSA, and The Post. They really heated the oven, got people excited, and that's what led to that million people. We had over a million visitors to the website in, in August, almost, uh, almost 5 million page views, and you can see the top 10 countries that followed the race. If you want to go to the next one, this is my favorite, the Tour Tracker. This is, this is the, the way, it's, a, it's an Adobe software program called the Tour Tracker. Uh, Radio Shack actually sponsors it, so we call it the Shack Tracker. 
But this is the way that you can watch this race on any device, laptop, desktop, iPad, Android. And what, what's amazing is it's, it's all, it's all uh, management and business leaders sitting at their desk, and they, and they follow the race live in the afternoon during the week for an average of 35 minutes a session. And we're going to continue to improve the technology. This is, you know, what I call the dashboard. When you're sitting there in front of your device, and the riders, um, this is a little known fact. It's, it, it's a company that we work with out of the Springs, but at least half of the riders per team are wearing a chip that allows us to kind of understand what's happening inside their body, whether it's heart rate, whether it's power output, and so you can follow that race and, and really kind of almost feel like you're in the car in NASCAR. And then, and then this is the stat I love. During race week, on social media, we were mentioned every 3.8 seconds. So we were, um, we were pretty excited. We, we got up to uh, about almost 45,000 Facebook likes. And our goal this year is to get to 100,000. But when we get to race week, uh, we have a social media team of five people that are doing nothing but pushing Colorado and the, the race out to the world. So I showed this slide uh, starting last March when we when we would go out and, and start to talk to broadcasters and sponsors and a few people kind of snickered because uh, if you look there's some pretty good company on there. Uh, but I had a mentor once that said if you're going to paint, paint with a big brush. And we said you know where do we want to be in five years? Where do we want to be in ten years? Where do we want to be in twenty? And we, we want to be mentioned with that one on the far left, the Super Bowl and Daytona 500 and the Masters. Kentucky Derby, the U.S. Open, and, and I think based on the support that we have in this room and the fan support, and we continue to grow, 10 years from now, we might, we might actually literally be under, literally, and, and uh, probably be mentioned with some of those other properties. Question I often get, uh, we changed the name, and it was the Quizmos Pro Challenge, people you know, often ask, why isn't Colorado in the name? And I think now that we've raced a year and people see the worldwide coverage that we get through television and through our digital assets, and John said it best last year, the winner. We, we don't really care who's going to win our race. This was leading into race week. We, we didn't know it was going to be Levi Weckheimer, but we knew Colorado was going to be the big winner. But the reason why USA Pro Challenge is we, we wanted to convey the, the long-term vision. And if you think about some of these big properties, like the US Open in tennis, very clean. So you're not going to see, moving forward, a corporate name in front of the USA Pro Challenge. You may see a presenting sponsor down the road, but we want to keep it clean. And the other answer, or question that I'll answer before it has is, the race will always be in Colorado. It's, it's appropriate here.